What's going on, Skid? I just got back from a week vacation. Went to the beach, took the family to, a, to the beach. And it looks like someone has, quote, sat on our pool bathroom sink. We all know what that means. I don't try to fix it because you make it look nice again. A week later, they, quote, sit back on it again. It breaks it again, but it's leaking. When it came off the wall, it made it leak. Well, hopefully the old nut here is just loose. Just need to give it a little tighten. Oh yeah. As old Steve Lavy would say, loose as a goose. Loose as a goose, mama. <laughs> All right, it's been running for a couple of minutes. No more leaking. I mean, it was dripping pretty bad down there. Just had to tighten up this old nut here. Still a little shiny from the from the old leak, but it's not leaking. It was also leaking from here pretty bad from where this turned. It turned and then put the nut out of whack and this was dripping pretty bad. It's just a never-ending battle with summertime pool bathroom sinks. <clears throat> and I used to, you know, fix this, caulk it up real nice, come back a week later, it'd be all pushed out again. So I'm picking and choose my battles and just gonna leave it. And hopefully they don't sit on it again where it breaks it or makes it leak. But it's good now. Off to the next adventure. All right, Skid, I don't know if you guys remember a few videos ago that the uh, lady who didn't want to let me in to replace her leaking air handler coil, well, she finally let me in. She's still freaked out, only wants one man in there with a mask, so I just did it, so I'll go over here and let you take a look at it. Yeah, I got it under a pressure test right now with nitrogen. It's been sitting at 203 for a good 15 minutes. So I'll leave a couple of coil uh, replacement videos in the description below on this video. I got a couple. It'll look exactly the same. And they're about 20 minutes long, so that's why I'm not gonna get into it because it's all cookie cutter stuff. It's all the same, so it'd be the exact video. So I'll leave those two in the description below. But anyway, I pumped the unit down, meaning I put all the refrigerant into the condensing unit and replaced the coil. And it's been sitting at 203, so I'm pretty confident here. I'll go in there and show you that my braze and here is the old coil that I took out. It's all dirty. And it was leaking. Where was it leaking? Right there. Right there. They usually leak here where the aluminum meets the copper. Like right up in here. Some people say, well, why don't you just braze it with aluminum? I mean, the coils are under warranty. They're free, so might as well just replace it. And there's the new coil. There's my braze. It's pretty tight. You just kind of do what you can do. Pretty tight. This is the bubbles. No bubbles, no troubles. Didn't see any bubbles. But look how kind of came a little dinged up. A little dinged up from Goodman. I put some tabs in the drain. But this is the new one. I'm about to release the nitrogen and put it all back together. Pulling a vac. Want to go to 300 microns. We're almost there. I put my micron gauge right here where the where the yellow hose usually goes. It works for me. Got some out here that I did years ago, exactly like this, that are still going strong. Come on, 300. All right, Skid, we are below 300 microns. Nice deep vacuum. Just shut it down and release the refrigerant. Always put the caps on when I pull a vacuum, just so it pulls a nice vacuum. I've seen some guys put nylog on the threads and stuff. You can do that as well. I'll put some nylog on the threads when I'm done here. 
Nylog is like Teflon for, for HVAC, for refrigerant. I've got it on my website. On the tool parts of my website if you want to go get you some. We'll release the liquid side first. And this will bring us up to positive pressure. As you can see we're under negative pressure. Once we release, it will bring us to positive pressure. It's still under a vacuum, so it's negative. There we go. I won't film this whole boring process, but you get the point. When this side goes all the way up and stops, do this side as well, the low side. Yeah, today is my first day back from vacation, and this is not how I like not how I like to come back. But while I was on vacation, I started a TikTok. My family was like, you got to start a TikTok. So I might do my one minute quick tips on TikTok. If you guys have a TikTok, you can follow me. I'm over there at Dirty Maintenance Nation. TikTok, Dirty Maintenance Nation. I'll do some, probably all my drain clearing and my little one, one minute dirty maintenance tech tips over there or something like that. Drop a little nylog on the threads. I'll leave some of this in the video description below if you want to get you some. Again, it's like Teflon for HVAC. Just put a little bit around the threads. If you ever have a leaky service valve, like it's leaking out the top here, just a small leak, nothing crazy. You can drop some nylog on it and tighten down the cap. And then it'll take care of it, usually. Or you can just replace the service valve, sweat it off, and solder a new one on. Get your butt on there, skid. All right, we're back up to positive pressure. Got my tank hooked up. 14A, you got to turn it upside down. Bleed the line, get the air out. And we are ready to turn the system on and give them a good superheat. Emerson Check and Charge. Emerson Check and Charge. It's free. 410A. We got a piston, so we're going to charge by superheat. The indoor wet bulb was 66 degrees. It's about 75 degrees out here. That's your dry bulb. The outside temperature in the shade, 75. Vapor pressure. It's been running for about 15 minutes, so I'll let it equalize. Uh, 111. One twelve, one twelve, we'll go one twelve. Line temp. Your suction line temp. 74 degrees. Get all your calculations and you hit calculate. Current superheat 37. Recommended our target superheat 21. So add charge saying add Freon. So I'm just gonna bump it up a little bit till I get a 21 degree superheat. See the superheat right now is 37, so we gotta bring that down. For today, I'm gonna be real careful and just bump it. Don't want to go too crazy. Or you'll overshoot it. Easy to do. So that's it. I'm just going to keep adding Freon until this number here, the superheat number, gets to 21. Or around it. You can be, you can be within 3. 
right, Skid, we have hit the recommended superheat 21. I'm gonna leave it right there. What's up, cool? As, as I said earlier, you can get it, get it within three. So I'm gonna leave it right there. They're gonna be good to go. Again, I'll leave a a full coil replacement video in the description below. I'll leave a couple of videos. It'll look exactly the same. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Just wanted to say hello. And uh, by the way, thank you guys so much. I hit 25,000 subscribers. I love all my loyal subscribers. I love interacting with you guys. Thank you all so much. And uh, I'm back from vacation and I'll be rolling some dirty maintenance again. I'm gonna pull these off. I'm gonna drop some nylog around these. So if the Schrader valve, Schrader core uh, ever craps his pants, it'll be a second line of defense. All right, guys, thank you all for watching. See you in the next video. Blades.